you should think of an engine as a clock, everything works in synchronization to keep good time. In a diesel engine, all the components work together to convert heat energy to mechanical energy. Combustion The heating of air and fuel together produces combustion, which creates the force required to run the engine. Air, which contains oxygen, is required to burn the fuel. Fuel produces the force. When atomized, diesel fuels ignite easily and burn efficiently. Combustion occurs when the air-fuel mixture heats up enough to ignite. It must burn quickly in a controlled fashion to produce the most heat energy. Remember, air, plus fuel, plus heat, equals combustion. Factors that control combustion Combustion is controlled by three factors. 1. The volume of air compressed. 2. The type of fuel used. 3. The amount of fuel mixed with the air. Combustion chamber. The combustion chamber is formed by 1. Cylinder liner. 2. Piston. 3. Intake valve. 4. Exhaust valve. And 5. Cylinder head. Compression. When air is compressed, it heats up. The more you compress air, the hotter it gets. If it is compressed enough, it produces temperatures above the fuel's ignition temperature. Amount of fuel The amount of fuel is also important because more fuel produces more force. When injected into an enclosed area containing sufficient air, a small amount of fuel produces large amounts of heat and force. More fuel more force Type of fuel the type of fuel used in the engine affects combustion because different fuels burn at different temperatures, and some burn more thoroughly. Diesel Engine Combustion Process In a diesel engine, air is compressed inside the combustion chamber until it is hot enough to ignite the fuel. Then, fuel is injected into the hot chamber and combustion occurs. Gasoline Engine Combustion Process In a gasoline engine, Compressed air does not provide enough heat for combustion to begin. A spark plug ignites the mixture which creates combustion. Transmitting heat energy In both engine types, combustion produces heat energy which causes the gases trapped in the combustion chamber to expand pushing the piston down. As the piston moves down, it moves other mechanical components that do the work. Reciprocating and rotary motion the components work together to transform reciprocating motion into rotary motion. When combustion occurs, it moves the piston and connecting rod in an up and down motion called reciprocating motion. The connecting rod turns the crankshaft which converts the reciprocating motion into circular motion called rotary motion. This is how the engine transforms the heat of combustion into usable energy. Intake Stroke the cycle starts with the intake stroke. First the intake valve opens. At the same time the piston moves to bottom dead center, or BDC, its lowest point, pulling air into the combustion chamber. The crankshaft turns 180 degrees, or half a revolution. The exhaust valve remains closed. Compression stroke during the second or compression stroke the intake valve closes, sealing the combustion chamber. The piston moves up to its highest point in the cylinder liner, called top dead center or TDC. The trapped air is compressed and very hot. The amount the air is compressed is called the compression ratio. Most diesel engines have a compression ratio between 13 to 1 and 20 to 1. The crankshaft has turned 360 degrees or one complete revolution. Compression ratio equals BDC volume divided by TDC volume. Power stroke. Diesel fuel is injected near the end of the compression stroke. This creates combustion and starts the power stroke. The intake and exhaust valves remain closed to seal the combustion chamber. The force of combustion pushes the piston down which causes the connecting rod to turn the crankshaft another 180 degrees. 
the crankshaft has now made one and a half revolutions since the cycle started. Exhaust stroke. The exhaust stroke is the final stroke in the cycle. During the exhaust stroke the exhaust valve opens as the piston moves up forcing the burned gases out of the cylinder. At TDC, the exhaust valve closes, the intake valve opens, and the cycle begins again. The connecting rod had turned the crankshaft another 180 degrees. For stroke cycle. At the end of the exhaust stroke the entire process is complete. During this time the crankshaft has completed two 360 degree rotations. Taken together, the intake, compression, power and exhaust strokes are called a cycle, thus the name, the four-stroke cycle. And the cycle occurs over and over as long as the engine is running. The sequence in which each cylinder comes to the power stroke is called the firing order of the engine. For strokes of piston equals. Two revolutions of crankshaft.